Hi, hi beautiful people. Welcome to Kunda Home, a place where we discuss ideas and tricks to elevate our homes. And today I'm going to be answering this question here. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the meaning behind mud growth. Each piece of mud growth that you see online or anywhere, because mud growth is incredibly one of the popular textiles that is around today. Even when some people use it without knowing its origins or where it came from, that's why we're here today to talk about its meaning. Each piece of mud growth that you see has a beautiful meaning. It has secrets. These include African proverbs, uh, secrets in society, and sometimes historical events and also sometimes depending on the individual each cloth carry some meanings that are hidden not only is it beautiful but it, but it also has meanings which is really interesting and amazing for people who are interested in mad growth or who are buying it would be distinctively beautiful to really know what you're buying first we're going to talk about the history of the mad growth or the making of the mad growth this is a cloth that really started way back in 1700s in Mali, Africa. The making of mud growth is a time-consuming process. Normally it takes from five days to a week to complete. It's made totally from scratch. The main start the process by weaving cotton thread on a room. It's made from 100% pure cotton. This is cotton which is homegrown by local farmers and then later on it's dyed using plant dyes. It's a beautiful process. So let's talk about the meaning. I'm gonna start with this, which represents wealthy and luxury, the periods of wealthy women. Being a woman, I think I love this one. These are just symbols, just like you see most symbols like we have in society, so that's the significance behind it. Like when you saw a woman putting on this, like it meant like the person was wealthy, it just meant luxury. The next one is this one, it's called the bed of bamboo and miniatures, and uh, it's symbolizes superiority makes a whole lot of sense like when you go into modern sense of it less than or equal to you do remember those signs in mass and it doesn't mean like anyone who has that is trying to show that but back in the day the women who were having that were trying to show like uh, to show their co-wives they are superior the most superior which is in the African settings because uh, like a man would have so many wives warriors belt they symbolize Size bravery our know, warriors used to wear before going to war or going to hunt it symbolizes bravery in other words it's uh, you are brave when you wear belts a warrior's belt and that's what it signifies this one is the farmer's seco and it has a beautiful story behind that a farmer used to have a seco that he used to love so, so much he decided that it deserved its own pattern meanings it's called uh, the farmer's seco sometimes it's called the back of the sickle braid uh, which is amazing and then this one represents is symbolizes the love of family and community of course when you go worldwide it uh, it also symbolizes community and then the world it depends on what you're really representing at that particular moment so it's a uh, family then community the love of family then community or the love of community then the whole world and then this one a uh, flower of the carabash it represents prosperity it symbolizes prosperity a symbol of the fruiting tree the gowns were very very significant in my traditional was used for making yogurt and then it used curry bushera it's called flower of the carabash that's all you need to know and it signifies prosperity this person here represents bravery the symbol that was used to alert people in case there was war and also it was used to 
to scare away wild animals, you not know, to attack the community. And then this one here, it signifies protection and warning. It's called goat hooves. Uh, different languages, it's called something else, because in uh, our local language, it's called emgongo. And you see it also as a design on, uh, on houses, pines, on what you will see sometimes when you see only this, like this sign, it signifies um, like protection or warning. But if it has the downer one, making a chevron sign, it signifies fertility that will differ from community to community. And then this one here, it's called crocodile traces or crocodile fingers, depending on which community you're into. It symbolizes or signifies harmony and balance. This one represents a swindle, a swindle that is used in weaving fabric crop which includes the mud cross just a button for the window a very very old button and traditional button and then this other one it's a uh, symbol for good fortune iguanas elbow it said that iguanas lead hunters to water so it's a symbol for good fortune in other words they lead the hunter who is thirsty to the spring of water so it signifies good fortune those few button meanings i know there's so many but some of them are really Really important to certain communities they have our secrets uh, in these communities it's not like it should be public knowledge since they are secrets mud cloth started way back in the 1700s in Mali it was made by the women in society but of today also men do the weaving I know some companies that really make the mud cloth from New York I don't know what they use but I, I know they do paint mud cloth they're selling it and it's cheaper compared to the traditional one which is made by this Rocco women in Africa. So if you're buying your things, be sure to know is it authentic? Because if your mud growth is not boiled using such, such herbs in such a pot, I don't think you should be paying much. I'm not trying to downplay people's jobs or anything. I'm just trying to say the truth. That there is the authentic one, really authentic one, which and I made from such a herbs. Even on our website, we are very clear. We have some mud growth patterns which are like machine prints and uh, different textiles and then we have the organic tab which is literally overseas stock which comes from africa so when you're shopping you should know which one do i want but of course for us overall our main mission is to talk about african interiors and different textiles really really try to provide that the history of the mud growth where it came from and uh, anyway we've come to an end of this video thank you so much for watching please if you haven't subscribed please do and I guess I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye for now and thanks for watching.